Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Ministry of Agriculture implements action plan responding to agricultural losses post Hurricane Elsa. The National Emergency Management Organization urges the public to remain on high alert, and 24 students recognized in the YEPS Extempo Challenge. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives has implemented an action plan with the view of addressing the agricultural damage caused by the passage of Hurricane Elsa. Anissia Antoine begins the broadcast. The Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives conducted an initial assessment on the impact of Hurricane Elsa. The assessment looked at damages on the various extension and advisory services, including the Fisheries Department, Livestock Division, and Crop Extension Division. According to Permanent Secretary of the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives, Barrymore Felicier, losses totaled more than $34 million, with banana and plantain farmers suffering the most, with reported losses of 80% or more of their farms. We're looking in the region of 2,400 acres to 2,800 acres affected and over 600 farmers affected by that, in that sector. We also saw to a certain extent um, trop, fruit trees, root crops, vegetables were also affected in the crop extension area. In terms of fisheries, we saw that there were some damaged vessels by the Denry area, um, minimal losses though. We also saw CMOS farmers in the areas of Poile became affected, uh, the headline losses of CMOS. In the area of livestock division, we saw about 70% damage to sheds, animal sheds. We saw some mortalities in terms of swine, poultry in the livestock sector. Um, so these areas have been affected. In terms of forestry, we saw some slides in the forest reserve. Also, you would have noticed that there would have been some fallen trees and some damaged trees in that area. Mr. Felicier reiterates the Department of Agriculture's commitment to assisting farmers. He notes that the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives is currently working on a support package for farmers. We are here today trying to finalize that support package and it will be communicated to the executive, to the cabinet of ministers for their deliberation and for their final approval. So once that is received, then we will communicate to our stakeholders what that support will be and in what form it will take. Farmers are advised to report their losses to their respective extension divisions. The extension facilities are located in Babono, Bexo, Marigo, Soufre, Viewfort, Urge and Richfort. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The government of St. Lucia is looking to build back better, stronger and more resiliently following the passage of Hurricane Elsa. The Category 1 hurricane battered the island on Friday, the 2nd of July, 2021, claiming one life and leaving behind a trail of damage to infrastructure, homes and agriculture. During an update following the passage of the hurricane, Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, Honorable Stevenson King, indicated that the country has commenced the implementation of programs to build its climate resilience. Are we resilient enough? No, we are not. We've still got a long way to go. There's need for us to look at what we are doing in terms of the engineering and structural measures in terms of resilience. And we also have to look at the bioengineering measures to help improve the, the, the road condition. And oftentimes I speak of the road conditions as not just merely the carriageway, but the carriageway, the shoulders, the, the drains, and the environment. What sort of environment are we um, facilitating our road infrastructure and therefore in our new approaches, in the new approaches that we are developing within the Ministry of Infrastructure, we are taking very seriously the issue of resilience, resilience to climate change. The Infrastructure Minister explained that the Ministry's most recent program, that is the Road Improvement and Maintenance Program RIM Phase 4, takes into consideration the threat of climate change. This program, he noted, has been specifically designed with the intention of improving St. Lucia's resilience. In terms of the road designs and what we are seeing emerging, it's not just a carriageway, but we're looking at stronger pavement strengths, 
pavement strengths that will take us probably 15 and 20 years um, before any destruction. Pavement strengths that can withstand the category one, two, three, four, and five hurricanes. We're looking at drainage systems that can withstand those sort of phenomena. And we're also looking at pedestrian because really the, the road infrastructure is really a, a, an element, a factor of production what speaks to production in terms of transportation, movement of people, movement of goods, movement of services. And so you have to take that into consideration so that with a phenomena, in this case a category one, but let's say a category five, that notwithstanding that you'd have been able to deal with the issue of flooding and of course arresting any potential paralysis that may cause in terms of movement of people and movement of goods and services and transportation generally and that is what we are factoring into our into our new designs um, building a national standard of, of um, a national code of, of construction for our road infrastructure the minister also highlighted the need for improvements to the country's utilities infrastructure we noticed throughout the country because of the heavy rainfalls and and the impact we noticed a number of utility poles being knocked down in throughout the country and that in itself is probably one major element in climate resilience in infrastructure how do you continue to build infrastructure that can protect your utility lines of course you need utility for electricity for communication and for services generally and therefore in new construction of road infrastructure we now need to say how do we build to protect the utility services and the answer to this is being able to build on the ground with stronger pavements with the necessary ducting of, of, of the lines and therefore if we are able to protect our, our, our land in terms of protecting land, the, the potential of land, land slippage then it means that we would have been able to deal with the issue of damage to the, the utility infrastructure. That was Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, Honorable Stevenson King. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, is urging members of the public to remain in a state of constant preparedness. NEMO, while still conducting damage assessments in the aftermath of the passage of Hurricane Elsa, highlighted the unpredictable threat of natural disasters, especially during the hurricane season. We get details in this report. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, continues to assess the impact of the passage of Hurricane Elsa to roads, infrastructure, lives and livelihoods with a view of returning St. Lucia to a sense of normalcy. Director of NEMO, Doreen Gustav, sees the opportunity to offer condolences to the family and loved ones of Peter Victor Fosse Jacques, who lost his life during the passage of the hurricane. The director, noting the devastation caused by Hurricane Elsa, urged members of the public to ensure that they remain in a constant state of preparedness. Nemo received reports of partial and total damage to homes throughout the island. On Saturday, July 3rd, the Prime Minister, an official from Infrastructure and myself, did an aerial reconnaissance to have a view of the damage and as was mentioned previously, the damage to the banana fields were quite visible. Indeed, the agriculture sector suffered extensive damages. Please be reminded that we are still in the midst of an active Atlantic hurricane season. And based on the destructive nature of these tropical activities, you are advised to continue with the hurricane preparedness if you have not done so. Your preparedness plan should include, for example, a family plan, a business plan, assessment around your home and property to identify the hazards. The director reminded the public of the very real and present threat and danger of such disasters which have only worsened due to the impact of climate change. These disasters continue to threaten societies, both economically and socially, as well as lives and livelihoods. We have about 15 more storms remaining, and it takes only one to cause catastrophic effect on any one country. 
with the rise in climate change, we have seen the rapid intensification of hurricanes. For example, Tropical Storm Elsa changing rapidly into a hurricane within a short space of time. This behavior could have only been made possible due to climate change and the effects of climate change on our small island development states, and this could only be mitigated through preparedness. Preparedness also builds on the resilience of people, and as a nation, it is our desire to become resilient. Hurricane Elsa passed over the island on Friday, the 2nd of July, 2021. On the lighter side, 24 students were recognized for making bold statements against crime and violence in their communities through the art of extempo. Jesse Leos has a report on the Youth Empowerment Project's Anti-Crime and Violence Youth Extempo Challenge prize-giving ceremony. During a recent award ceremony, officials of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment tipped their hats off to the participants of the Anti-Crime and Violence Youth Extempo Challenge for the creativity and conviction that they brought to the stage on June 6th. Coordinator for the Ministry's Youth Empowerment Project, Joanne Husbands, says the initiative successfully yielded fresh insight on the issue of crime and violence and how it can be tackled. We were able to get an idea of their perceptions, their concerns, and possible solutions as youth as it relates to crime, violence, safety, and community development. And as well, they endeavored to educate persons about preventative strategies that other youth like themselves and persons in the wider community can employ. The topics ranged from bullying, violence against women, the justice system, and ways to improve the living standards in the communities. Assistant Commissioner of Police Dr. Mashama Seeley recalls the hesitance of some of the participants when they realized during the workshop that there was so much more to Annex Temple than rhyming lines. She thanks them for rising to the challenge. Because I attended at least one of your workshops, I saw where you started off where some people were afraid to, they didn't want to go participate after having gone through some of the workshop activities because they felt they may not be ready in time. But I'd like to also congratulate you for your bravery. I also love the messages that were portrayed by the participants. We heard the challenges that they face when it comes to gang violence, domestic violence, parenting, and other social issues that affect us every single day. Jim Xavier, Deputy Director of the Social Transformation Community Services Unit with the Ministry, has committed to continue collaborating with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in efforts toward enhancing safety and security in St. Lucia's communities. I want to see this as a deepening of collaboration between the Ministry of Equity and the, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, and, and of course the community at large. Because as we've said, crime, crime is everybody's business. Uh, we cannot just leave it to the police officers to tackle the issue of crime. And even the students, you have a role to play. And so I would want to compliment the, the year program, of course, for funding and taking the initiative to really advance this program. I want to again compliment the teachers and the, the, the parents who would have assisted in the students in developing them. The Anti-Crime and Violence Youth Extempo engaged 24 participants in three age categories from various schools and communities in Castries. The feedback obtained from the participants will be used by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to create new strategies to tackle the issues of crime and violence. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leonce reporting. Bank of St. Lucia and St. Lucia Workers Credit Union partner in a historic collaboration to provide a credit union members with contactless debit cards. A small ceremony with stakeholders last week marked the official launch of this new milestone, the birth of the St. Lucia Workers Credit Union Visa card powered by Bank of St. Lucia. We have more in this report.
2020, Bank of St. Lucia launched its contactless visa, credit and debit cards. Today, the financial institution is extending this important convenience banking service to members of the St. Lucia Workers' Credit Union by way of this partnership. According to Deputy Managing Director Lyndon Arnold, accessibility to one's funds is important and a priority for every financial institution, and BOSL is extremely excited to share this innovation with the staff and members of the St. Lucia Workers' Credit Union. Because since the onset of COVID last year, what we've seen now as a norm are the, the, the long queues outside of banks, supermarkets, utility companies, and it is really not an efficient use of our time in terms of that queuing. And that passion has translated into us at Banker St. Lucia finding ways of how we can better serve our customers to allow them to make bet better use of their time. And I remember on a few occasions in, in recent weeks having to pass across the, the Derek Walcott Square there and realize that outside your entrance doors, those queues also exist. But guess what? With the card now, those queues can be shortened. In addition to being able to access funds at all Bank of St. Lucia ATMs, local ATMs, and 1 million ATMs worldwide, cardholders will be able to shop online and make use of the card to make purchases locally and globally. The president and general manager of the credit union were present and shared their zeal and appreciation for the project finally coming to fruition. Today, I somehow feel very humbled by this occasion. And humbled, why? Because I think that a small organization which started out of a briefcase based on the ideas of a few persons with a vision to create something that could last, something that could provide the means to empower not just their staff, but later on, much of St. Lucia, is now taking an even greater step. We have come a long way and we are here right now with a product that is going to benefit our members. We know what COVID did and we saw our members being disadvantaged during the COVID times, not being able to access their funds when the credit union was closed. And today, I would say that we are ready should another pandemic God forbid happen, our members are now positioned whereby they would not be left out in the cold. Member of the St. Lucia Workers' Credit Union, Leslie Colomar, says that despite the fact that people see credit unions as a savings institution, it's equally important to be able to give members that option. The technology has been there within the last 12 to 15 years, but what the, the pandemic has taught us is it's made it mandatory to move into the digital space. And not everybody has the expertise or appetite for it. And so the credit union actually been brave enough to take that step and partnering with an entity such as Banker Solutions, who is tried and tested and have the expertise was a really smart move. Since the advent of COVID-19, Bank of St. Lucia has launched and implemented a plethora of technologically advanced initiatives aimed at improving convenience and safety for customers. Customers can expect to hear more exciting news of new services and partnerships in the near future. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Léonce reporting. The Division of Transport wishes to inform the general public of the resumption of services in the Southern Transport Division, effective July 8, 2021. In addition, the Division would like to take this opportunity to apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused to its customers in the Southern Transport Office. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. 
Monsieur le Président général, Monsieur Madame le Département, qui est responsable pour l'information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale PIA, NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle en créole, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Si vous êtes en ministère des Affaires touristiques à cette ci Donaline Vitti, déclaré que nous avons un pile de qui n'est pas intéressé pour ouvrir le business en affaires touristiques parce que vous avez quoi, ça c'est seulement pour l'hôtel. Si vous êtes en affaires touristiques, vous avez un pile de la vérité. Même si vous êtes présent devant une cérémonie, la semaine passée, à village Canary, pour ouvrir un établissement de business chocolat à Belleville, qui a porté nous Coco cette ci Coco cette ci c'est l'initiative Madame Maria Jackson et si pour Marie Calixtus Jackson. Selon le secrétaire permanent Vité, le gouvernement a établi l'occasion pour cette ci dépenser l'argent pour ouvrir l'établissement, même quand Madame Jackson a fait. Les nous fait tourisme, nous ni pour faire manière pour les gens qui a visité cette ici, aimer cette ici, et venir en l'amour avec cette ici, et prendre tout ça cette ici, ni avec cette ici. So ça c'est um, couple là, Maria et, et, et um, Maui fait Jodia pour ouvrir une grand place pour un restaurant et une place pour un café um, chocolat avec l'autre bagaille, nous avons dit que ça fait aussi. Um, Ce n'est pas là où on est un hôtel, où on est un tourisme. So, si on est un waterfall, si on est un lovier, qui descend en, en popétio, si on est un ou quoi, qui ça travaille, et qu'on ne peut si une manière pour faire. Vini, bon ministère du tourisme, vini, en caïnou, à ce waterfront, à Castri, et parlez de nous. Dis-nous ça, on est en Lido, ça, on est à Chile, qui manière vous voulez faire business, ou qui manière vous voulez um, vendre chocolat, ou si on est en l'autre bagaille café, et manière nous ça mette ou en, en copain l'autre monde qui a fait le um, tourisme pour ou aussi jouer un dollar de um, l'industrie. Mamzelle Vite aussi. Le gouvernement a aidé les gens qui ont la télé pour trouver un soulagement de taxes avec l'autre assistance. So, ce n'est pas tout hôtel là, tout celle qui s'ajoute ça. Ou saint lycien si vous voulez faire un restaurant, si vous voulez faire un bagaille qu'on entend, um, pour um, visiter un tourisme, ou ça joue un customs duty um, aussi. Donc, so, venez juste parler de nous. Nous sommes là pour le couteau et pour dire une manière où ça fait plus aisé pour vous. En parlant de ça, Business chocolat à Belleville, en village Canary, qui a apporté bon bénéfice, pas pour Canary seulement, mais pour cette ici généralement. Ça, c'est l'opinion chef agence de support pour business cette ici, Export saint Lucia, Mlle Sonita Daniel. Mlle Daniel, qui est aussi présent pour une grande cérémonie pour ouvrir business chocolat en Belleville, ça, c'est Coco cette ici, déclare qu'il y a une manière de projeter ça qui a apporté bon bénéfice. Pour le village là, et c'est le ci en total. Quand il fait un chai impact à la communauté canari, et puis nous, très contents pour ici, et puis Maria. Um, agri... N'importe quel business qui est agricole, et puis la femme qui est agricole, ou quand il ce business là, qui impact la famille et la communauté. Donc so, um, so nous sommes bien contents pour ici à Odia. Chef officier d'éducation en cette ci Dr. Fiona Meyer, déclaré que le ministère a commencé un affaire assessment pour déterminer et pour ménager des gros dommages que les, institu les institutions d'éducation ont fait à PIA durant le passage du cyclone Elsa. Cyclone, selon Dr. Meyer, il faut savoir que c'est pour vivre et établir un environnement qui est plus gentil pour les étudiants suivre les son l'école. Chef officier d'éducation a dit que la majorité des dommages c'était à l'école qui se situait en face à tout ce que ci et à l'école secondaire Bocage. Dr. Mayer a annoncé que l'année 4 l'école qui trouvait affectée par goût de l'eau et de boussaille en paroisse de Sofouye et qu'au résultat de ça, c'est l'école Sala ni pour rester fermée. Il dit aussi que l'année l'école première qui trouvait affectée par goût de l'eau et de boussaille en région 7 et qui a tout ni brisé nettoyé. Dr. Mayer fait comprendre que alors, c'est raison qui est nécessaire pour placer attention à ce divers l'école qui trouvait dommagé avec des gros assistants Yonibouzin. Chef officier d'éducation a remarqué aussi la majorité du travail est fait durant la finissement de la semaine à l'école secondaire Vieux Fort, côté en portion 
en fait taille là te donc de connacher et pour ça là je tenir pour placer baron à l'école ça là donc on m'a dit qui le travail et puis tout officier en ministère éducation qui ni responsabilité pour c'est quand les officiers techniques officiers éducation officiers qui est responsable pour santé pour ces écoles pays et qui est responsable pour construction ça c'est pour faire assurer que l'année l'environnement en place qui s'en est sauve à toutes ces écoles ça là avant l'école fermée le 9e juillet 2021 Chef officier d'éducation Dr Fiona Mayer déclare que yo kai informer les parents qui jouent les étudiants kai ne pour présenter ko yo pour écrit l'examination common entrance. Est-ce que ça nous a toi finissement le euh nouvelle nous aujourd'hui mes et madame mon cher monsieur autant pour regarder mon ca bonne invitation pour je ne puis moi encore c'est de conserver la vie et présenter l'autre nouvelle en créole. À présent mon ca vie présenter Chanel. Merci Apple Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.